Parker, great there job. You, you guys are doing right. a great job with the products. Please thank Parker. Thank you. And our whole development team. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we're seeing a lot of exciting things. We've seen some different kinds of applications today. I'm sure you'd agree. A new kind of sales app, a new kind of service app. Do you think these are just great examples of the changes? And you've seen that these apps just look and act differently. The devices that they're on are different. The way that the users are interacting is different because our industry is changing. So how can you build these apps yourself? You know, these apps are all built on Force.com, our platform for cloud apps. Everything that you've seen so far is built on Force.com. So if you're a customer and you have apps that you need to deploy internally and you don't want to buy another database, you don't want to buy another app server, you don't want to buy another piece of hardware, you don't want to have to worry about the security infrastructure. You don't want to have to worry about the scalability, the security, the reliability, availability. We handle all that for you. You focus on your app, we'll focus on everything else. That's what cloud computing is all about. And that's why we've become the leading cloud platform for building these Chip Cloud 2 apps and broadly recognized. We have over 160,000 apps on this platform. And this is everything from custom websites, you know, like even the UCSF website that you saw earlier, to websites from Dell and Starbucks and many others, to custom apps that are running inside the company, or custom apps that are running on your iPhones or iPads or Blackberries or Android devices. Look, traditional platforms are just too expensive. They haven't changed. There's plenty of companies within a five mile radius of right here who are very happy to sell you another piece of hardware or another piece of software. I'm sure everyone here would agree. Or another piece of networking equipment. But the reality is for a lot of these apps, it's too expensive, it's too complicated, it's too slow. There has to be a better way. That's why we've been working on building this force.com platform. We focused on the infrastructure We've built the security in, the reliability, the scalability, the speed. And you can track it all at trust.salesforce.com. You can see how many transactions did we deliver, at what performance, at what scale, across the world. Everything is transparent and open to you at trust.salesforce.com. That's a clear sign that you're working with a cloud computing company and not a false cloud when you can see a trust site like that. We have one, Amazon has one, eBay has one. And not just that, upgrades are now happening for Salesforce customers within five minutes. So you have almost no downtime during the upgrade cycle. We have proven real-time integration, sandbox environments like you heard from Motorola, and the ability for Salesforce tenants to talk to each other through something called Salesforce to Salesforce. And we currently have three global data centers and disaster recovery built in and we recently announced we're going to be working on a new data center in Tokyo for next year. Now, on that infrastructure, we've built the development tools so that our developers, or you, can build these apps rapidly. Elastic database services, so you don't have to buy another SQL database. Programmable user interface, Java or Apex code in the platform. Visual process manager, so you can build that workflow. Deploy as a website instantly. Deploy on a mobile platform instantly. Deploy the integrated content library capabilities instantly. Real-time analytics, all the dashboards already built in. Or the knowledge management. And if there's components that you are need on AppExchange.com, there's over 800 apps with one click, our own version of Apple's App Store, but for enterprise software, that you can access that code just with one click. And now, Starting today, a new product, a new version of the platform, a new vision where profiles and status updates and groups and feeds and the content sharing and the app updates and the security and sharing models and the APIs and the integration with Google and Facebook and Twitter that you saw today all automatically built in. So there's no work for you to do to get that collaboration. You can have your own Facebook inside your company. You can have your own vertical version of Facebook in your enterprise, but with the security and trust and privacy that you need. That is the power of Force.com. That is the power of the world's first collaboration platform. It's been 20 or 30 years since Lotus Notes since we really had a collaboration platform that was state of the art. 
that you could build collaboration apps, that you could easily share and manage information, and that worked on modern devices. And look, IBM just didn't move it forward. They just didn't move the platform forward. Microsoft just didn't move SharePoint forward fast enough into cloud computing. And Force.com is now the fastest way to build these cloud apps. Companies are able to reduce their three-year TCO by 54%. IDC says, after talking to hundreds of our customers, five times faster and half the cost with Force.com. Five times faster and half the cost, and huge savings in staffing and development time. And bam, today, 160,000 custom Force.com apps, you can instantly turn on chatter. All of the capabilities that you saw now available in those apps. And as we release those new features and functions three times a year, they're all automatically inherited into the app. That's the power of cloud computing. The inheritance has automatically happened. We've also recognized that for us to really reach out, and I just mentioned it briefly, it's not just about Apex for us, but it's also about Java. We recognize that enterprise Java developers just don't have a clear path to the cloud. You know, there's six million of these developers and they want to build apps like the ones you just saw. So that's why we're working on building now the world's first enterprise Java cloud with VMForce, our partnership between VMware and Salesforce.com to become the trusted enterprise cloud for these six million Java developers. That's why I'm so delighted to introduce you now to one of the really great leaders of our industry. Please welcome the president and CEO of VMware, Paul Moritz. Paul, come on up here. Please welcome Paul Moritz. Paul, thanks, thanks so much for Hi, being Mark. here today. Great to see you. Great to be. Before we get started, I yes, just want sir. to let you know that I've got uh, bad news, a complaint, and good news. Mm -hmm. All right, let's hear it, Paul. Uh, the first is the bad news is uh, for those of you fellow Africans out here, uh, South Africa got eliminated from the World Cup this morning. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. The complaint is I didn't have one of those iPads under my chair. <laughs> well, Paul, you know what? I could remedy that situation very quickly. But no, somebody took my free ticket. I wonder who it is. Somebody's but, uh, claiming one right now. Yeah. The good news is, uh, as you know, Mark, uh, we are in the process of uh, moving VMware for our internal use of moving off Siebel. And uh, last month, we moved over our core Salesforce from Siebel to Salesforce.com, and uh, the process went flawlessly. Fantastic. <laughs> Paul, thank you very much for that. There's a lot of people inside saying free. We all have to do our part to move the cloud too, Paul. We all have to do our part. Thank you. Well, it's great to be with you here today because we've got something really exciting we're working on here together. <laughs> Absolutely. Paul, you know, can you just tell us, look, you've been, we've been working together for on and off in different parts of the industry for almost 30 years. Can you tell us, what is your vision for developers building apps going forward, especially with this great app acquisition you did with SpringSource for VMware. How, how is this all fitting together? Well, I, I think there are three important things that we're trying to do together here. One is, is to provide a path for Java developers, who are the largest community developers in the world today, uh, to have a way that they can take all of their skills and uh, take advantage of the cloud, that they don't have to worry about obtaining infrastructure, they can focus on their core logic of their applications and they can uh, uh, move their applications into the cloud. Uh, the second, I think, important thing is a lot of those developers not only want to be able to move into the cloud, but they want to be able to build upon that platform that you've built up. They want to be able to write in a modern way and tap into all that functionality that you already have for them in a Salesforce uh, cloud. And then thirdly, wouldn't it be good if when you moved your Java applications into the cloud, the basic framework or API for doing that was actually available across clouds so that you could, with greater rather than less effort, move your application between various clouds that are going to be out there. And that's really at the heart of what we're working on together, uh, which is taking the Spring framework, which is the leading way that Java applications are written today. More than half of the lines of new Java code are being written in the context of the Spring framework. And uh, we're working together to instantiate that Spring framework in the salesforce.cloud, and we call that vmforce.com. And uh, we've got a lot of very positive reaction from developers from that. And then, uh, as you know, we also uh, last month extended uh, this coalition here 
by an announcement of Google. And Google is also going to be taking the Spring programming framework and using that as the basic API for their uh, App Engine cloud. So really good news for developers is how they're going to be able to tap into both all the benefits of the cloud and the specific functionality that they can get out of Salesforce.com. Well, that's, that's great news, Paul, and you're doing a fantastic job as CEO of VMware, VMware just creating a whole new vision for the Java community. Can, can you tell me, how, how have customers and developers and press, you know, you're going all around the world like I am, what, what's been the reaction uh, Well, as I said, this? it's been a very positive reaction, and, and part of this is this, this, no, this notion of building bridges. Uh, much as companies like ourselves, VMware, and your customers are now moving into the cloud, there's a bunch of legacy that has to stay behind, and uh, we need to build bridges. Uh, so what we're doing here is taking a technology that will allow you to write applications that will be deployed according to your business needs, either into the Salesforce.com cloud, into the Google cloud, or back into your own internal infrastructure because the programming framework isolates you from all of the plumbing underneath. And uh, that message of building bridges and allowing people to get into the full benefits of the cloud in an orderly way is getting really positive reaction. <laughs> Well, I have to ask you, because how many years were you at Microsoft, uh, Paul? <laughs> Nearly 15 years. 15 years, and uh, you did a lot of pioneering work. Is this the first time you've seen Microsoft protest a vendor? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm told, actually, that we have now made it on the public enemy list as well at Oh, Microsoft. my gosh. Well, welcome. You've made it then. Congratulations. <laughs> Paul Moritz. Thank you very much. Please thank Paul Moritz, CEO of VMware.